Hey, Merry Christmas, everyone, and welcome back to the Dive Bar Comedy Podcast. Last Christmas, I gave you my heart. The very next day, you gave it away. La, 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 la. I forgot the word. Yeah, you sing any more of that, we're going to have to pay George Michael's estate. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he's dead. Mom, I'm a uh, wild Joe. I'm here with my parents. Uh, we just celebrated Christmas and my sister. Uh, that was GT singing a beautiful rendition of Wham's Last Christmas. <laughs> if you haven't seen the video, check it out. Um, so uh, my sister is here, Brianne. Uh, say hello. Hello. Merry Christmas. And my dad, Richard. Merry Christmas. And my mom, Vicky. Merry Christmas, everyone. Uh, my parents were lucky enough to come to one of our recent comedy shows. What did you think of our show that we did uh, out there? I think it was, where was that? Liquid Zoo. Oh, oh, oh. Ah, ah. <laughs> I thought it was a lot of fun, except for the scary guys watching their football game. Uh, what made them so scary? They wanted it quiet on the set. They didn't want you doing your comedy. <laughs> yeah, it's always hard to compete with sports fans. But uh, anyway, we're up here uh, celebrating. We just did Christmas. Uh, my dad is desperately seeking a coin of some sort because he has a lottery scratcher. Uh, what do you think your odds are going to be? Because I'm going to win the big bucks. What was your favorite um, present this year, Brianne? Uh, I like that one that you gave to Guy that had the headphones in the hat. So that you can just be like a bum on the street talking to yourself and nobody will even notice. Yeah, that was good for him. He has a bald head, much like GT. My favorite gift this year was beanie from your dad. <laughs> oh, you're still wearing it. <laughs> How nice. So uh, this year we did a white elephant gift exchange, which uh, for those of you who haven't done it, that's the hot new type of gift exchange. Uh, it's kind of out... Uh, what was it? The Secret Santa is out. White Elephant is in. Oh, man. I wrote a song about a Secret Santa. Good thing I never released it. Yeah, so the White Elephant Exchange, if for those who haven't played, is fun. You pick a number and, and take turns choosing a gift randomly, and then you get to steal. You could choose the gift or steal somebody else's. Yeah, that AeroPress was in high demand. What, what's an AeroPress? It makes coffee. Yep, and I got number 9 out of 10, which I thought would be a great number, and then number 10 stole my present. That bastard. My brother. Anyway, <laughs> he refused to be on this show. Uh, was that your first white elephant exchange, Mom? It was, and I ended up with the gift that I bought. <laughs> you did? <laughs> I didn't know that. Well, that may have been your favorite gift. <laughs> it might be fun. It's called Choose Your Poison. Oh, that was the one you bought. Uh, see, we didn't really um, give out the name of who was giving what, so I didn't know who bought what. I thought my gift of the candle, after I saw everybody else's, I thought my candle would be like like a loser, but, but people liked the candle. I didn't see the candle. Well, anyway. Peyton ended up with it. He came late, so he got last choice. <laughs> Your gift was last choice. Well, I got a bunch of socks. Me and GT have to share them. Socks. Oh, my God. Different colors. How am I going to wear those? I think I'm going to wear those at the gym. It will be embarrassing no matter where you wear them, and I already have a drawer full of socks, so uh, I don't know. But uh, socks to the gym. <laughs> don't you wear socks to the gym? No. Sho shoes without socks? Uh, no. I don't wear no socks at the gym. What do you wear to the gym? Uh, where I'm my my underwear? <laughs> I don't know. I, I think he goes around in sandals. You can't wear sandals at I the wear gym. Socks. You have to cover. I wear socks. I wear socks under my sandals. You just said you didn't wear. So you just said you didn't wear socks. <laughs> well, any way you look at it, it sounds pretty tacky. <laughs> so. Uh, it is tacky. It is tacky. So we had a big, huge ham, ham for the holidays. Um, what uh, what did you guys think of the the two hams that we bought? 
delicious. It was delicious, but we're going to have to have a lot of leftovers. I heard it was 18 pounds for 17 people. That's like over a pound per person. There'll be a ham with beans for weeks. Think about your dad. He likes to wake up early in the morning. He goes to bed early. He wakes to wake up early in the morning, start making those uh, bacons. Bacon. Bacon. Yeah, he makes bacon in the morning, eggs and toast. He's really good at it, too. He's a, he's a, he's a great breakfast cook. Well, uh, you can tell we're not Muslim because we're eating a lot of swine. Good job. Randy did a, be- a better job than I. He found the right frying pan. Yeah, the frying pans were sorry. I brought the frying pans from my house. They're yeah. good ones. Yes, but we didn't get to use those frying pans because we were cooking bacon before you got there. Okay. All right, blame it on the pan. Last time, this is we're doing an Airbnb right now. And last time we did an Airbnb with your parents, it was kind of crazy. Remember? We your dad dropped the wine bottle on the floor. And, and good thing he didn't crack the tile. And the owner kept coming around, looking through the window. And he wouldn't go away. He starts living in a trailer across the street. And the crazy neighbors start screaming, fire, fire, fire. And then, he, and, then the, and then the owner comes around and he wants to make, make us pizza. And what else we had? Well, uh, the thing about that place, it was like somebody still lived there. I mean, they lived there so much, you're right. They didn't even leave. They just kept coming every day. <laughs> and uh, all their kids' pictures were all over the walls and all their, all, all their clothing. All their clothing was everywhere, and uh, there was no place to put your own clothes. It was kind of crazy to rent out your house when you're still living in it like that. But this place is the opposite. It's like a like a new house that somebody's buying with like pretty much nothing inside. So I don't know which which is better. I prefer having plenty of supplies. Me too. That's all I have to say about that. <laughs> all right. Well, I, I like having it nice and empty and clean, and it feels like a rental instead of feeling like you're just staying at somebody's house. When we have a rental, we want all the supplies already prepared for us, already ready for us. I don't want to. They only gave us one towel a person. They only gave us one bath towel a person yeah. here. Oh, yeah, and then the dryer won't dry, so oh, that's a problem. And, and and the washer and dryer is outside. And it's raining, so there's that. <laughs> and, and it didn't even work good. I, I kept putting it on high, heavy load, and it still didn't dry nothing. Yep. Uh, I guess you got to read the reviews before you rent to Airbnb. Oh, it, had great, it had great reviews. And it, it's an actually a great place. Uh, so, yeah, we're uh, here in the Bay Area, and uh, it's not easy to find a great place in the Bay Area. So, anyway, what else? Anything, uh, any th- favorite traditions for Christmas? Or? Uh, as far as traditions goes for, uh, for Christmas, uh, we open gifts and, uh, and we just <laughs> hang around with family and, and we talk about, we watch movies and eat pies. So, yeah, your parents were at, our uh, last dive bar comedy show, and and they saw what happens at dive bars. You know, most of the patrons don't really like to listen to comedy while they're watching sports, and they pre- and they get pretty rowdy. That's what dive bar comedy is about. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So it's nice to have a little break from it all. We're out here uh, just celebrating, and like like GT said, spending time just hanging out with family, eating and watching TV, and. Uh, Enjoying our very empty, poorly stocked, but but nice Airbnb. So, all right. Uh, good luck, Dad, with your scratcher. It looks like you're getting started on your scratcher. Good luck. I got I, I got ten thousand dollars already. No, no. Oh, well, uh, one one I got number twenty seven ten thousand dollars. Well, I think you have to. I think you probably have to get more than one twenty seven. All right. Thank you guys for. Uh, Joining the podcast and participating, and uh, 
hopefully you can check it out because it should be coming out tonight. Woo! Merry Christmas! <laughs> Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas! Ho ho ho! Attention all drinkers! Attention all drinkers! Do you like a smooth tasting vodka that goes down with no burn? How about Global Vodka straight from Italy? Check it out. You can find it at global-vodka.com. Not only does it have a smooth, great taste, it also is gluten-free and organic for you health nuts. So try Global Vodka. You can find it at global-vodka.com. Or next time you're in L.A., check it out at Universal Bar and Grill. Silent night, holy night. Yeah, GT, if you uh, don't make it as a comedian, you could always make it as a Christmas caroler. That was just lovely, if you could remember the words. We should go door to door. Maybe we can create some fans. What do you think? I think we're going to scare a lot of people. Do I look creepy? Are you asking for an honest opinion? Yes. Yes. Thank you! Oh, God. Well... <clears throat> this has been interesting. Glad you guys got to meet the parents, so to speak. And uh, it's been a fun holiday. Hope you guys all enjoyed your Christmas or whatever holiday you celebrate, if you celebrate. And uh, I hope you guys at least got some time off work, if you work. All right, guys. Bunch of comedians are coming up, so stay tuned. This is GT's Comedy Jam, and uh, I try to do dive bars, mostly. People are like, hey, what's up with your shows, man? How come you always go to this, like, dark, diviest places? Well, that's the thing about me. I, try, I only do dive bars, you know? Why don't you book flappers? Why don't you book the Laugh Factory? Come on, GT. That's not a, our brand. Our brand is more like, that's why we have Dive Bar Comedy Podcast, you know? Because we look for, we look for, like, drunks. That's what we do, you know? We, <laughs> we look for people who, got, who, who are opinionated. But I, 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 don't, I don't encourage hecklers. I, I'm not looking for hecklers, you know? But uh, we, are, we have our host right now. Uh, his name is Mr. C. Come on up here, Mr. C. He's been with GT's Comedy Jam since November of 2016. We've been doing this every month consistently. And he's been with us since day one. And we haven't divorced yet. All right, guys. Here you go. It's our host, Mr. C. Yeah. Thank you, GT. Thank you, GT. Welcome to GT's Comedy Jam. I don't know who our first comedian is because GT has terrible communication skills. All right, all right, all right. So round us up, round my applause for yourselves for coming out tonight. I want to thank the establishment tonight, Schoonerville's Bar and Grill. Never been here before, but I like it. You guys are looking good. My name is Mr. Cena Forza, a.k.a. Poppy Carlo. We banging in the case because we drink and whatnot. Anyway, I wanted to skip bags. Uh, I've known GT, which I call the Armenian Assassin, for about, God, 10 years now. And I met him six months after I got here. And I'm a rapper, so I'm like, yo, 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 you know what I'm saying? Something like that, I'll shoot your kids, right? I do all that stuff. I'm a rapper. You know that's all rappers say. That's all they say. They call it conscious, whatever. Anyway, hip hop my ass. Anyway, GT, he comes running up to me. Yo, man, man, bro, bro, bro. We should do fucking shows together, bro. I was just like, who is this guy? I don't know you from nothing. I was like, hello? I thought he was gay. I'm not gonna lie, it's gay. I was like, what, what man just runs up to you and just like, can I get your number? Let's hang out. Let's do some shows together. Yeah, I'm like, okay, right. this guy, he wants to fuck me in the ass. Yeah, Come right. on, look at him. He's got that bald head. It fits perfectly. Yeah, right. <laughs> Yo, GT, who's the first comedian? What's in there? Great communication skills. Now, oh, okay, that's a good one. That's a good one. Now, being that he's Eastern European, his handwriting is terrible, slightly chicken scratchy. 
But that's only from like, you know, the ghettos that they made during uh, World War II. All right. <laughs> I know, it's too soon. It's too soon. Too soon! All right, all right. Hey, ladies. You want some hot deals on sexy styles? Check out EverydaySweetheart.com for everyday great deals on cute and sexy outfits. Club wear, mini dresses, leggings, sexy lingerie. And guys, feel free to stop by too and find something hot for the girl of your dreams. That's EverydaySweetheart.com. And for 10% off, use the friend code TAKE10. That's T-A-K-E-1-0. Thanks a lot. All right, welcome back to the Dive Bar Comedy Podcast. We are here with returning comic Caroline Langford. How's it going? Everything's great. How's it going with you? We're good. Uh, we're waiting for this game to be over to start the show. They won't start until this non-professional football game is over. Bloody hell, how long does it go on? I mean, do we know? Is it one of those that they keep adding time to? We got like six, we got like six more minutes until it's over. But six minutes in football, football minutes is like 20 minutes because they add a lot of ads. Great, I think I'll go outside and smoke. What are you going to smoke? No, no, it's just American spirit. It's <laughs> got the American spirit with a British accent. It's very cool. But didn't I sound American when I said American? I said American spirit. Doesn't that sound American? Yeah, it, it did. It did. You're working on your American voice. Yeah. What's going on, GT? You seem distracted. Well, I was just looking at the time clock, football time clock. It's taking forever. That's how I always feel about football. Now, here's the thing. You guys call it football. But to us, football... Yes, but we don't call it soccer. We call it football. This is American and has no... I think Americans did it just to maybe piss off the Europeans. They call it football. I think so. And it, it has no resemblance to soccer, does it, whatsoever? I can't understand it. <laughs> it's not really. You just kick it once. And I just do a, fit, a field goal and they call it football. I don't really get it either. Yeah, well, basically, but it's the same thing, isn't it? Grown men playing with their balls. Yeah, playing with balls. Yeah, they should call it like run ball or something because they're always running. They're not kicking. Yeah, what is it about men that they do seem to like round balls? Of More like fetch ball. That sounds like a dog. But exactly, but men are dogs, aren't they? So men and dogs both like d balls, and men and dogs both have balls. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a true observation. No wonder, you must be an observational comic. I, well, I'm definitely, when it, I, I love dogs and men. So, and I observe them both and I have for many years. So I've made my observations. I could probably write a book about it. <laughs> as you should, as you should. So uh, you've been performing, you got, you got a lot, you've been getting booked a lot at Flappers. Flappers, I'm doing the Ice House this week. And um, I've done quite a lot. I'm really enjoying myself. I mean, listen, this is a thing you do because you enjoy it. I don't know anyone that goes, oh, my God, i got to go and do stand-up comedy. Oh, my God. You do it because you love it. Because we are some kind of, have some kind of masochistic uh, inherent trait in us. Let's humiliate ourselves on stage. You know? And you're very good at it, too. Thank you so much. As I say, I'm pretty new at it. Um, I think w one plus for me, being older, there's a lot of minuses. But the plus is that, you know, we've experienced stuff, so we... You know, we have a lot more in our head. I think I do tend to see the young ones love to talk about masturbation, and that's it. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Uh, the last guy we were interviewing with kept talking about masturbation during his interview. You're kidding. W w were they actually masturbating in the interview or just talking about it? No, because when I started trying to do follow-up questions, asking uh, details about it, then he, he got all weird and changed the subject. Really? We well, see, again, like dogs that bark but don't bite. It's all a front. That's what I think. Yeah, my friend has two little dogs. One barks all the time and doesn't bite, and the other one never barks but does bite. <laughs> well, that's, and that's a lot of men as well. The only thing I will say about all these guys that talk about their masturbation is I hope to hell they wash their hands. Well, they don't even have to masturbate to have dirty hands. Just going to the bathroom, they're always touching themselves. They're, they're scratching themselves all the time, and then they're touching doorknobs. Uh, the, the world is very German-fested. We just have to understand that. I know, and this is what it gives me a lot of panic, so I'm constantly washing my hands and trying not to touch any doorknobs. Elbows are good, though. You can do, you know, open things with your elbows. It's quite a skill. Oh, 
yeah, I've got the skills down. I'm afraid when I get older I won't be able to lift my leg high enough to flush the toilet and all of that stuff because uh, I'm doing some acrobatics in the bathroom. Yeah, I think people say, do you work out? And I go, yes, when I go to the bathroom. You know, public bathroom or whatever. That's a complete work. I don't need to go to the gym. I'm doing it there. They have the, the bathroom door that opens inward when you're trying to get out of the bathroom. So you have to somehow touch it with your clean hands, but you don't want to touch it. So it's a, yeah, it's tough to do with your elbows sometimes. Those doors are heavy. It is, and you try that in the on the airplane. That's the worst. You know, that door that, you know, it, it gets you into a panic. You can't, can't get the door open. You don't want to touch it. You know, you're using all the paper towels and, and everything. It's not fun. I'm seeing an invention coming here, like some kind of elbow hook or something that we can hook onto our elbows to open doors. I think that's a brilliant idea. I think you should... Uh, try and get it get someone to invent it because there'd be a lot of people especially women that would buy it you could you could get rich just from this little talk today suddenly i'll see you in 10 years you know billionaire from your elbow hooks thank you for inspiring these ideas this is uh this is what comedy is all about we we think about life and uh, get a lot of new ideas just sparking off Exactly. And so I wish you luck with your elbows and any invention you might do with such a thing. I'll be first in line to buy it. All right, Caroline. We look forward to hearing your set tonight. Thanks for coming back. You ready for your next meeting? Yeah. You ready for your next meeting? Yeah. All right, so put your hands together. Show some love. She got the seat for the first on the L for the last day. And show some love for Caroline. Night boy. Hello there. How's everyone doing? Good. Good? Right. Yeah. Well, I'm better. You see, I turned 60. Yeah. That's right. It's wonderful. I've always wanted to be 60. When I was a little girl, I said to my mum, Mummy, when I grow up, I want to be 60 and get lots of wrinkles. <laughs> and hair coming out of my chin. <laughs> and saggy boobies. <laughs> and crumbly bones. <laughs> so now I am. It's wonderful. Yeah, I've got crumbly bones. All my bones are crumbling like my previous marriages. <laughs> it's called osteoporosis. And I think it's bloody marvelous because my whole life, I've just never been able to touch my toes. But now I'll be able to without effort. <laughs> and then I can be just like my hero. Oh, I love him. The hunchback of Notre Dame. Ah, <laughs> oh, but you know, I'm, I'm happy being 60. But my friends go, well, you know, 60's the new 40. Why would I want to be 40? I was suicidal when I was 40. They say 40 is the new 20. I was anorexic then. Actually, I wouldn't mind being anorexic now. I got a little grandson. Sweet little thing. He was looking very upset. I said, what's the matter, darling? I'm turning five. Where did the time go? <laughs> Don't worry, darling. Five is the new fetus. <laughs> you know, at my age, I get these young girls coming up to me, and they say, Oh, if I can look half as good as you, when I get to your age, I'll be happy. But you don't look half as good as me now, so how does that work? <laughs> i tell you something, though. Being 60, wonderful. You get new talents. Every day you discover something new. I mean, just before I came in here, I discovered that I can sneeze hard and wet myself all at the same time. <laughs> I expect that's what they mean by multitasking, right? <laughs> Be
People say there's no sex at your age. What are you talking about, no sex? Of course there's sex. Just not in my house. <laughs> no, we do have sex. But we don't have a lot. And there is a reason. Because we've run out of positions. No, it's true. Now, you ladies here, I'm going to do you a favor. When you get home, not you, you're too young. <laughs> but the others. <laughs> when you get home, you get a mirror, you look down like this, right? And then you will understand the true meaning of gravity. It's all hanging. <laughs> so you can't go on top of him because he doesn't want to be looking up at a bloodhound, does he? <laughs> I know, you're, you're saying, okay, fine. Go on your knees so he doesn't see your face. Right, that solves one problem. But unfortunately then, your boobs look like zucchinis. <laughs> so that one's out. So what's left? The one on your back. You know, the old-fashioned way. Not a good idea. Because then your boobs look like pancakes. <laughs> so I'm afraid, at this age, and you learn, because it's going to come. <laughs> like that. The only position left is the ones with the lights off. Now, it's true. Husband and I don't have much sex. But I always know when he wants it. Babe, zucchini pancakes! <laughs> and it's off with the lights. But at least I've got my lovely kids. And they did come from sex. In case you didn't know, you're very young. Sex, you could get a baby. And I have a daughter, my daughter. She's a dirty hippie. <laughs> now I know being politically correct is saying I can't say that. Well, I can, and I will, because she's my daughter and she's a dirty hippie. <laughs> and besides, I don't think any of you have ever met a clean one, because they don't exist. <laughs> she says she doesn't wash to preserve water for the planet. <laughs> How much water is she preserving? <laughs> we shouldn't have a drought. <laughs> when she comes over, I've got to open up all the windows. She says to me, Mom, look, I got a nose ring. You like? <laughs> I love it. I've been looking for a curtain ring. Now we can hang the curtains on your nose. <laughs> she, then she shows me all her tattoos. All her tattoos. What do you think, Mom? What do I think? I think it's great. I never like you showing your skin. Now you've covered it up. <laughs> you know, darling, when you're not here, I go down to county jail and sit with the inmates makes me feel closer to you. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I saw there's a serial killer there. You and him have identical tattoos. What an achievement. I'm so proud of you, darling. I said, my daughter, what a beauty. What could make her even more beautiful? I know. Looking like an inmate from cell block H. <laughs> that's what mothers want, don't we? Anyway, that's my daughter. And I have a son. He doesn't smell. He's just on drugs. <laughs> no, but they're lovely. I'm so proud of my children. They give me a lot. Thank you very much. I'm Caroline Langford. <laughs> Round of applause from Caroline Langford. Have a good accent. Hey, hey Caroline, where are you from? Uh, England and Israel. Oh, from across the pond, mate. Yes. Oh, 
<laughs> Cheerio. No, that's. You know they actually um they putting out a Mary Poppins part two. You guys seen that advertisement? Anybody hype about that? How come like all English people they got the ill accent? So we think they smart just because of the accent, right? But like in England, you listen to some of the accents, other English people here, they're like, this motherfucker ghetto as shit. We, we think you're a fucking professor, because you're like, oh, oh, no, 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 no. Oh, he's from the northern part of England. Like, there's shit up there. They're almost like Irish damn there. <laughs> no, I know, it's too soon. It's too soon. It's too soon. So that's all right. No round of applause for Caroline Lang, but she did a great job. That's right. For a stinky, hippie daughter. You know what I mean? That's California. That's California, man. I'm, I'm a Philly dude. I've been out here for about 10 years. And it's crazy ill differences I noticed between back there and here. Back there, it's all congested. Everybody's in a hurry. Everything smells like urine, even if it's nice. And it's all in a rush, and it's always dark. Two, three weeks, no sun. It's like Europe, just like home. You should move to New York. You'll love it. Yeah. And we're not. Terrible place. And we're not. But everybody's in a rush, and we're dead serious. I come to California. Man, these motherfuckers. It's like the hippies got pissed at their old mean ass uncles in New York. They're like, yo, we're going to make a fucking city deep in the fucking desert, bro. We're not going to go to work on time. We're going to make weed legal and shit. We're going to surf, go to the mountains in Mexico the same day to get a whore. Fuck it. That's California. You know what I mean? Love it. Check out our latest sponsor, Unique Energy Drink. Start your day out with a bang and get your morning dose of caffeine from the great taste of Unique. Instead of the bitter flavor of coffee, the premium blend of natural ingredients makes this drink a great option for those into fitness and sports, pre-workout, or simply a way to start your day out right. Try Unique Energy Drink. You can find it on Amazon or a store near you. All right. We're at the Schoonerville here in Canoga Park. It's a dive bar slash sports, sports club. It's more like a sports bar. They told me it was a dive bar. It's more like a sports bar. Uh, so, uh, Denise, how you doing today? I'm hanging in there. By the way, this is Denise Williamson. Her, your name is very similar to one of my favorite singers, Denise Williams. Yes, and I, I, I have a story. One day I went into this club with a friend of mine, and it was my birthday. And she went up and told the DJ that it was my birthday, and of course he announces that Denise Williams is here, and everybody's looking all over trying to find her. Wow. She had such great songs and such a beautiful voice, but wasn't ever like overly famous. That's true. That's very true. Yeah. She probably could go to a bar and nobody recognized her. Probably. They recognized her name, but I don't think they would have recognized her. You could have just said, oh yeah, yeah, it's me. That's right. <laughs> They'd pressure you to sing. Of course, of course. Then they would have known. <laughs> uh, how often do you get people coming up to you? They find out you're a comic. They say, "Hey, tell me a joke, Denise." All the time. You know, that's the that's the next thing out of their mouth. Well, people that don't know you, people that know you, you know, they just. So what do you do? Tell them a joke usually. Oh, you do it. You're one of the few. Sometimes, sometimes, you know, if I have one off the top of my head. Otherwise, I just say, well, you'll have to come to a show. <laughs> you know what? I tried a couple times telling them a joke, and, uh, and then their next step is critiquing the joke. Of course. Of co or, or telling you a joke. That's nicer. Yeah. Well, at least sometimes it's nicer, but sometimes they're long and drawn out and not funny. That's the one thing about comedy. These long, drawn out jokes, they have to really have a good punchline or else it's not worth the wait. Exactly. Exactly. So Denise, uh, I want to know more about your tattoo. You got? Is that a tattoo? What is that a? Is that something permanent? What is that? Actually, it's adhesive. You see, and what it is, what they say it is, is a forehead gem. I just moved it around. Yeah, but the reason I started, it's sort of become my trademark. And the reason I started wearing them is when my son and daughter-in-law got married. She's Samoan, and she wanted all of the women to wear flowers in their hair. And of course, I had no hair to put a flower into. And I got a henna tattoo at first. And then my sister said, well, I can do that. And she started, you know, with the body paint and stuff. And then we sort of branched out. And these I can do myself so I don't have to go to my sister's house every Saturday to have her put it on. Uh, for our listeners that can't see, Denise has a bald head, just like, just like GT. <laughs> and uh, she has some beautiful rhinestones decorating. 
That's right. So, um, is have you always been bald? No, I, I went bald in chemotherapy, and then when my hair started to grow back, I found that I had male pattern baldness. And, you know, I wore wigs and hats and scarves for a while, and then I just got tired of it and said, the heck with it, and anybody that doesn't like it doesn't have to look. I like it. I like it. You have a nice round head. Thank you. And that's fortunate, because sometimes people don't have a head that you can just shave. GT has a round, really round head, like a ball. Yeah, he has a nice, he's, he looks good bald. I agree. So where, you, what, where are you from exactly? Actually, I was born and raised in Los Angeles, one of the few. Yep, so I'm from here, have never left. Well, you've been out of town, though. Well, I've been out of town, but I've never lived anywhere but Los Angeles. That's, that's also like GT. Well, GT moved here when he was a little kid, like four years old, but he's never left either. Okay, well, that, that's, that's about comparable. So uh, how long have you been doing comedy, and what got you into it? Well, actually, actually, I'm one of those accidental comics. I've been doing it for about five years now, but when I started doing comedy, I was helping a friend of mine, Marilyn, who she had a recurring role on um, Nickelodeon's Victorious, and when the show canceled, she decided to go into stand-up, and she said, well, Denise, I don't know anything about this. Maybe you can help me. And when I went to my first stand-up class, I actually went to learn the production side. But I had to, you know, write jokes and perform like everyone else, and I just fell in love with it, and I've been doing it ever since. So I became her competition. <laughs> oh, wow. Well, there's no competition in stand-up because there's so many, so many, many people, and it's just like singing. Everybody has their own voice. That's true, and it's very, very different. Most people are very, very different. That's true. I, mean, I guess there's some competition, but there's a room for a lot of winners. Yeah, and I think, you know, unfortunately, some comedians don't realize that. Maybe it takes them a while before they realize that, you know, the fact that you share the wealth doesn't mean that less is coming to you. And there's a lot of uh, ways to do comedy. You could be an actor, you could be a host of something, you could do stand-up or interviewing people like we're doing now. Exactly, exactly. So there's, there's whole lots of ways to, to use the talent. So, uh... GT, how's the show shaping up? This, uh, this folks are starting to walk in, and uh, we seem to have a, a little bit of a crowd, and and we got still plenty of time before the show starts. Yeah, GT's getting overwhelmed by uh, people just walking in. It, I guess it's almost showtime. Well, we still got a half an hour. But uh, anyway, Denise, uh, we are excited to hear your set. I've never heard you before, and... Um, I was wondering for people that are listening where they can find you online or, or what you're working on that they might want to check out. Well, thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited to be here. Um, you know, you can find me on Facebook at Denise Williamson, and I, my website is denisewilliamson.com, and on Twitter, I'm Denise is Funny, and Denise Williamson on, on um, I think, no, I'm D.E. Webb at, um, on um, Instagram. All right, you're everywhere. That's good. I'm trying. <laughs> Great. All right. Well, thanks for talking to us. Thank you so much. So, y'all yeah, guys ready for the next comedian coming up on the stage? Yeah. That's right. Once again, this is the GT Comedy Jam sponsored by Global Vodka at the Schumerville Barn Grill. I like this place. It's a nice place or whatnot. Anybody ever been here before? Round of applause for people who've been here before? You ever get in a bar fight here before, homie? Almost. This looks like a good bar fight, please. Tell me you don't want to pick up a bottle and hit somebody. Who wants to do it? Come on. Ah, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. I'm from Philly. We're violent. That's us. I'm in hippie California. I got to... Who wants to hug a tree? Huh? You. All right, all right. All right, so next minute coming up to the stage is a wonderful town. Got a beautiful name. Got the D for the first letter of the name, W for the last name. So put your hands together and show some love for Denise Williamson. You know, I've just started on a new chapter in my life. It's the old chapter. Now, some people are politically correct, and they call it the third chapter, but I call it what it is. It's the old chapter. And you know, there aren't too many good things about being old, but one good thing about being old is retirement, not having to work that nine to five every day. You know, I was so happy when I retired. I said, finally. I'm gonna have a chance to work on my bucket list. 
until I saw the size of my social security check. And then my bucket list became a fuck it list. That's right. Cruise around the world, fuck it. Facelift, tummy tuck, fuck it. Buying groceries next week, fuck it. I'm serious. If I want a good meal these days, I have to go out on a date. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the other good things that happened to me since I've been in my third chapter is my son got married, and I am a bachelorette again for the first time in over 20 years. Thank you. That's right. That's right. Now, you know what that means, don't you? It means I can walk through my house butt naked. Without hearing mine, nobody wants to see that. Oh, but he was wrong, honey. I made $200 left. <laughs> but now I will admit that I hadn't been on the dating scene for quite a while. In fact, I hadn't been in a relationship in so long that when my breast cancer surgeon told me that I couldn't participate in any contact sports right after surgery, I had no idea what she was talking about. I thought she meant I couldn't play football. <laughs> But now, I'm out here searching for candidates I might not mind waking up next to for the next few years. But it ain't easy, because the game has changed. And the ones I really feel sorry for you men, because you used to own the game, you used to have it going on. And men used to provide for their women, until some sorry broad decided she wanted to work for a living. <laughs> decided she needed to be equal. Now women are capable, self-sufficient, independent, and you guys think that we should be taking care of you. But that's some bullshit. Mm -mm. See, back in my day, men said there were three things they needed to change about a woman. They needed to change, they needed to change her mind, her address, and her last name. But ladies, now, if we want a man to take care of us, there are three things we have to change about him. We have to change his will, <laughs> his insurance policy, and his diapers. That's right, nurses and purses. That's what they're looking for now, ladies. But I decided if I was going to take care of a man, it was going to be a young man. Because unlike Carolyn, I'm here tonight to dispel the myth that women lose their sex drive as they get older. <laughs> Honey, somebody poked me on Facebook last night and I had three orgasms. <laughs> That's right. Now, do we have any other cancer survivors in the house tonight? Me. One? Okay, give her a hand. Give her a hand. Yes, all right. I've been cancer free for over 10 years now. Thank you. But you know, sometimes I still go back to the support group meetings and I talk to the newer cancer patients, you know, and answer questions for them and stuff. And one night, I remember there was this little lady in the back and she raised her hand and she said, did losing your hair ruin your sex life? And I said, oh no, sugar. No man has ever asked me for a piece of hair. <laughs> in fact, when I try to give them something with hair on it, they move the hair out the way trying to get to what they want. And now you might be surprised, you might be surprised that I've gotten some benefits from having breast cancer. That's right. Like the insurance company paid for the implants. Yeah. That's right, this is Silicon Valley right here, baby. But did you know they make you carry a card around with you when you have breast implants? Yeah. Now they told me that I had to have this card in case I'm in an accident. But I use my card for a different reason. Like the other night, I was out with this fine young guy. And I was just getting my groove on, having a good time. And all of a sudden, he tried to get all romantic with me. So I put my card out, and I gave it to him. And he looked at it and said, well, um, what's this for? And I said, well, I'm just trying to make sure you don't bite off more than you can chew. 
Because if you pop it, you pay for it, boo. That's right. I've gotten the light, so I, I need to get on. He's telling me to shut up. But I do have to tell you one last thing. And that is that I became a grandmother recently. Yes, thank you. And I've been having such a good time playing with, with my little granddaughter, Natalie. But the other day, my son sat me down and told me that he thought that I should start acting my age. Told me he thought I had a sexual dysfunction. And I told him, you're damn right. I'm 66 years old and I'm getting ready to have a vagina sewn into my hip so I can start getting a little bit on the side. I'm Denise Williams and thank you so much. And I guess he wants me to keep going. Oh, okay. Sorry about that. <laughs> Great job. Another round of applause for Ms. Denise Williamson. <laughs> Excellent. And that's, I like that. I like the fact that she's a cancer survivor. And when I round of applause for surviving that hard game, baby. God damn, it's hard work. You know what I mean? I'm sure uh, as prevalent as that is in society because, you know, I'm sure it touches everybody's family. Myself, I've had the fortunate yet unfortunate opportunity to have at least five or six friends who have lost their mothers from it. I've had three or four more that have survived. And we're not so a round of applause for the survivors. Um, just to speak on that, um, as you know, I'm with the Skip Bags. One of my friends, his name is Kyle Stefanski. He actually has an organization called Rhonda's Kiss. His mother had passed from it. And what they learned from it, because even though they were rich people, they learned that even though insurance covers a lot of shit, what it doesn't cover is a lot of the incidentals, the ride to the diagnostic centers, the, the little in-between stuff, the little small stuff you can't do. So whatever organization it is, if you got a couple extra dollars, man, and especially if it's something that not only donates to the cure, but donates to the maintenance of survival, you know, throw something out there to whoever you can mess with, and round of applause for anybody doing something to deal with cancer. Real shit right there, real shit. <laughs> That's right, that's right, that's right. LA residents, are you tired of slippery floors? Are you afraid you might slip on your tile? Well, check out tightgripla.com. It's a local business coming out, surveying your floors, and treating it with a non-slip solution, a semi-permanent non-slip solution that will keep your floors safe, whether in the rain outdoors or indoors in the kitchen or bathroom areas that sometimes get wet and very slippery. So if you want safer floors and to not get injured while you're just walking around, check out tightgripla.com. Hey, we are here with the Dive Bar Comedy Podcast. I'm Wild Joe. Here's GT. Hey, hey, hey. We got Tom Ayers here. Hello. How you doing, Tom? Hello. How's it going, boss? So, uh, Tom, uh, I remember meeting you a long time ago at Flappers Comedy Club. Uh, that's a nice comedy club. And uh, now here we are in this sports bar. How do you feel? Very good. This this place is cool. It reminds me of the old days back in Jersey. But then again, the other club that I worked for you looked like Jersey to me. You, what do you do? You just find these clubs that look like Jersey? <laughs> I try to book, like, dive bars. Nice. That's the thing. That's the bomb. The bomb. I got to tell you. Dive bars, that's where you learn comedy. If you're, gonna, you, if you're trying out comedy, go find a dive bar, get up, and die. And that's, what you, that's what you're supposed to do. And then you learn how to not die. You go, when you're driving home going, oh, that sucked so bad, that's when you go, oh, I'm never going to do that again. And you get funny. But uh, I like this place. There's a nice stage, elevated stage, and there's like a little area where people can watch comedy, and then the other half of the room where people can play pool and go to the bar and ignore comedy. Yes, this uh, this is actually not as bad a dive bar as I've seen. I mean, I've I've been to uh, just I don't know. I've I've worked the, the worst of the worst. So this is this is nice. This is a good club. Yeah, I don't think it's really a good club. Come on, Tom, be be serious. Be be true. I was hoping that if I said something nice about it, they give me pre fries or something. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not the owner. <laughs> All right, this place sucks. Oh, it's very clean. It's very clean. The, it got all quiet. I think the show is about to start. Uh, what do we have to look forward to uh, in hearing your show? What kind of comedy are you going to do? Oh, I was thinking about getting very political. No, I don't get political. I, I I decided not to get political. I don't know. I don't feel out the room. They look like a bunch of 
fun people, but then it looks like a bunch of comics. So I don't know. We'll see. What, maybe I'll make fun of a bunch of comics. And we got a lot of fans here too, not just comics, but friends of comics. So. Uh. Yes, I do. I I do see like normal looking people mixed in with the comics. Saying I'm not a normal looking person. You know, <laughs> no, <laughs> not at all. <laughs> I'll take that as a compliment. So uh, anyway, I think we're going to start the show soon. Uh, where can people find you online, and uh, and what do you have going on that, that people can uh, check out? Let's see, Tom Ayers, um, Tom Ayers, anything on YouTube, any of that. Um, I just did a, a benefit with Bill Burr. I'm going to be doing another one um, as soon as possible, probably in the new year, like January, February. Um, we, we had a, a really great benefit for... Um, a little boy, a little two-year-old with an aggressive uh, form of, of cancer, and Bill rocked. He was so cool, and he was so great, and he said um, he would do another one with us. It was great. That's amazing. I actually saw him at Flappers a long time ago, too. It may have even been on the same show as you, where he uh, he was on my same show. I can't say I opened for him, but I happened to be going up before him, and then he went up later. If you went on before him and he went on after you, you opened for Bill Burr. That's the law. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, that's cool. I could definitely see you having that vibe of getting along with him. Yeah, yeah. He's he's great. I actually, scary, and I'll say this out loud. Um, back in the '90s, I worked with him in Boston. So, yeah. You go way back. I go way back. Yeah. Um, wow. Wow. All right, Tom. Uh, what's your social media? Some social media. Oh, Tom. Anything Tom Mares, Um, you'll find me. All right. All right. I look forward to hearing your set. Thanks a lot. All right, you guys ready for the next comedian comes to the stage? Yeah. Are you ready for the next comedian comes to the stage? Yeah. All right, so show some love. Put your hands together. He got the T for the first letter, A for the last, just like Mr. Boy who played a boom, 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 boom. His name is Mr. Tom Iron. Yeah. Hello. You guys, you good with this? You good? You all right? Yeah. Here, this is Northridge. Are we in Northridge? Where the fuck are we? Canola Park. No, oh, man. That dude is like, no Park, man. The fuck? You guys look like your own reality show. <laughs> this group right here. <laughs> oh, man. So. <clears throat> People ask me, Tom, are you a dropout? <laughs> no, I'm a cesarean. <laughs> <laughs> you guys watching um, How I Met Your Mother before? <laughs> I was on How, you Met, How I Met Your Mother. I was a homeless guy. I played a homeless guy 14 times in Hollywood. 14. It actually helped me buy my house. That's true. Nice. All right, bro. I did. I was in um, Las Vegas with Josh Dumas, the pilot. And I was a homeless guy in that. But How I Met Your Mother, they had me as a, um, it was called, and it, it, they just ran it because of Thanksgiving. They run everything. Um, belly full of turkey. They had me, um, they brought me to a strip club to get a lap dance instead of like buying me turkey. I was a homeless guy. <laughs> That's my time. Thank you. Good night. <laughs> no, 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 dude. <laughs> I'm sorry, dude. I'm sorry. I wouldn't do that. I'll give you a heads up, I promise. <laughs> he was like, I got this. <laughs> what happened, you ran out? They pissed you off? So I'm not good at um, social media, I suck. This girl started, I was Instagram, she posted herself in a bikini and I started following her like that day. And now I'm like, oh man, I'm like a scumbag, you know? I was like, shit. So then I wrote a little thing saying, look, I'm sorry. I started following you the day that you posted yourself in a bikini. And she's like, no, it's not okay. And I'm no, I, I feel bad. And I'm following you. And, and it's that day. And she's like, no, it's really not a thing. It's not. I'm like, yeah, no, I'm actually really following you. You just made a left. And, and you know, <laughs> I feel bad. Is there guest parking here? So some of this stuff would just have to try out in an audience study. <laughs> if it sucks or not. <clears throat> Thanks. <laughs> international sign, international. Anywhere you go on the planet. Do you guys want some coffee? 
because you're looking right the fuck at me. This is an international sign. International. Wherever the fuck you go on the planet, it means money. 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 If, if you had if you turn upside down, cheese, cheese, be table. International, <laughs> international, that's right, I'll slow down. International sign. If you're in your car driving, you do it out your window. Oh, you do it out your window. So I just picked a booger. <laughs> Internet, no matter where you go, they know. They look at you like, and you're like, no, dude, it's Link. It's just Link from the chair. It's Link, it's just gotta drop. <clears throat> Roll down your window, international sign for roll down your window. I can talk to you for that. But now, now it's this, because it's electric. <laughs> <clears throat> so, um, I don't have an ass. They spend no expense here at Scooterville for stand up. <laughs> like a fight. I feel like I'm at a Home Depot. <laughs> it's like doing stand-up at a Home Depot. <clears throat> so, um, I call my dog Herpes, he won't heal either. I haven't fucking said this <laughs> that joke on stage in probably 20 years. And I saved it for you guys. Can you know the guy try to like, Shake this off the map back in fucking 94. <laughs> Get a little earthquake that's Canoga Park. <sighs> Get out of here! That's okay. You know what's nice about you guys? There's no roll involved in the laughter. It's like, ha <laughs> 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 oh. Very quick. <clears throat> so, I read a lot. You guys read? Yeah. Readers? I'm a big reader. Big. Not like books or anything, but storefronts and signs and shit like that all day long. I don't know, in my 50s, I started reading things out loud like a game show host for no reason at all. Taco Bell! <laughs> you ever do that? Just driving down the road, you're like, Taco Bell! Yeah, check, make sure it's nobody show you feel like an asshole. My friend's like, do you want a Taco Bell? Taco? Something wrong. <laughs> No, I just said, I just read the sign, that's all. Bank of, B of A, Bank of America, B of A, B of A, Bank of America, S of A. I'm like, what the fuck is that? S of A, South of America. My friend's like, sofa store, dude? The sofa store, really? They sell couches there. You guys all right with this? I'm going too fast. I can slow down. So um, I found this, I'm at the mall and I heard myself go, Juicy! Like, what the fuck? Where did I read that? A whole bunch of 15-year-old girls in front of me going, ah, that old man read my ad. He read my I said, I didn't read it. I didn't, okay, I read it, but I didn't like yell it. All right, I yelled it. But it's not like, it's not like I wrote it and then read it. That, the judge agreed with me that that would have been worse. And um, he let me go on time served. <clears throat> so it's really nice to whip you guys in this frenzy. I'm gonna let this show continue. I don't want to interrupt you guys anymore. Thanks a lot for having me. You guys, we're going to park. I'm done now. There he is. Oh shit. Good, that's right, that's right. Another round of applause for Tom. Hey. That's right, the lost love child of Roy A is the great xylophone player, would not. Roy used to fuck in the suburbs. So there it is, our Christmas special. Yes, it was a very nice Christmas. And uh, I'm just happy that Christmas was very. Uh, calm and quiet there was no fighting there was no pulling hairs there was no shouting there was no throwing things at each other no arguing nobody 
um, talking about uh, hating on Trump. Everybody was more um, easygoing. Nothing like our comedy shows. So I hope you guys enjoyed the show and meeting my parents. And we will be on next week with the Dive Bar Comedy Podcast.